Lord, do not punish me in your anger. In your wrath, do not chastise me. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. There is no wholesomeness in my flesh because of your anger. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. My iniquities overwhelm me, a burden too heavy for me. How often do we experience the reality of our own iniquities, our own bad behavior, our sin? If we have the awareness to constantly examine ourselves, we find that we fall short every day, making small, sometimes big offenses against God. It can be overwhelming when we confront this part of ourselves. The beautiful thing about God is that He wants us to come to Him with our sin. He doesn't banish us or disqualify us from relationship with Him. Rather, He sends Jesus to pay the price of all our sin, a price that we are incapable of paying, so that we can be in right relationship with God the Father. This is astounding. Most kings and rulers in our world yearn for power, money, fame. But Jesus comes to us in a dirty stable. He gets down on our level. He has dinner with sinners, teaches us how to be better people, and he dies in our place in the most horrific and humiliating way, nailed to a plank of wood in the dirt. The psalmist was right. The burden of our sin is too heavy for us, but Jesus carries it. The psalmist prays this prayer begging God to have mercy upon him, feeling that God is angry with him and perhaps chastising him. He writes, your arrows have sunk deep in me. At times when we suffer, it can feel like God is against us, but he is for us. I'm sure you've heard you know, people asking, why do bad things happen to good people? And this question assumes that we have some right to have nothing bad occur in our lives at all. But this is incorrect, and it's not how God told us life would be. In John chapter 16, Jesus says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus encourages us in Luke chapter 13 to enter through the narrow door. In other words, don't just go along with the way of the world, the way of the culture, but follow what God commands, which at times can appear unpopular because we are selfish and we stray easily. But God's way is the only way that works, that actually fulfills us. Again, in John 15, Jesus tells us, they persecute me, they will persecute you. The apostles in Acts found a way to rejoice at this because they were so proud of the gospel message and believed in its power. So why do bad things happen to good people? Well, it's not because God doesn't love us or isn't real. Bad things happen because people have free will and because sin entered the world but it's not the end of the story. We weren't actually made to live in this world forever, so we shouldn't be getting too comfortable. This Lent is an opportunity to take our sin, take our suffering and really get in touch with it, like this psalmist did, and nail it to the cross right next to Jesus, who suffers with us, who suffers in us. And only by this can we rise again with Jesus. We have to die to have eternal life. As baptized Christians, God is in us and he is constantly desiring us to grow closer to him. But this will only happen if we give him our time. And what better time than right now, this Lent.